Uh, there are no uh, statutory duties on City Hall in this area. Nonetheless, I have taken action on this matter. Examples of the action we have taken include convening a roundtable, bringing together all those with statutory responsibilities following serious flash flooding in 2021. Through the roundtable and the task and finish group that followed, stakeholders worked on the key short-term and longer-term actions needed to improve both London's emergency response uh, towards this and our city's resilience. The group are now developing London's first ever city sur citywide surface water flooding strategy. There is a strategic group now in place to oversee the delivery of this work and we're making good progress. The group complements the statutory responsibilities of the London boroughs, the Environment Agency, TfL and Thames Water, who must continue to take forward immediate actions to reduce flooding. My offices have been working to ensure Thames Water's London Flood Review and the National Infrastructure Commission's Flooding Review, both recently published, are considered as part of our forthcoming service water flooding strategy. My offices have contributed to both reviews, helping shape recommendations. My London plan policies are also reducing flood risk and the London Resilience Partnership are well prepared for extreme weather. I sent out 45,000 leaflets to basement properties ahead of the summer, providing flood advice. I called on boroughs to standardise their public flood information. We streamlined communications between partners and improved sharing of data during incidents. Thames Water increased capacity on its call centre and we agreed 30 actions on flood emergency preparedness and response, most of which are now complete. My annual London Flood Awareness Week, which began in 2018, ran at the end of last month with, with good coverage across social media. My Green New Deal programmes continue to deliver sustainable drainage and I've just launched another round of the Green and Resilient Spaces Fund targeting areas at highest climate risk. I'm working with utility companies using the infrastructure mapping application to help coordinate street works, promoting a dig once approach to deliver sustainable drainage with reduced costs and disruptions. And I'm working with the Environment Agency on their Thames Estuary 2001 programme to ensure London is protected from the risk of tidal flooding from the sea. Despite a lack of powers, responsibility and resources, we've done a huge amount, but the government's still moving too slowly and I'm calling on them for a flood risk funding uh, uh, to be available and simplified so we can access it for small urban flood interventions. Thank you, and thank you for the work that you're doing already in this area. I'm really pleased to hear the strategic group is now meeting and, and that works underway, it's really important. I asked you a written question about that strategy group and some of the work that they're doing, and you, you answered, this body will be working to ensure that improvements are made to surface water flood management. Now, if you're going to improve the management of water on the surface, you need more green space, more suds, as you just identified too. Now, I understand the need for new groups and for discussions, but what action is happening right now to depave, to make sure we've got less concrete on the ground and actually we're taking action right now rather than a year or two's time to make sure we're containing the flooding? Yeah, as ever, Chair, the member makes a, a good point. So we've done a lot of work around uh, what, what, what I've discovered uh, is the acronym is SUDS. It's the Sustainable uh, Urban Drainage System. So the idea is to use opportunity provided by uh, r improvements to make sure that suds go down. And what we're doing is working with uh, councils, TfL, to make sure any permanent street space improvements have the suds there. Because you're right, there's nothing waiting three years down the road. We need to be retrofitting where we can. And when there are, where there are works taking place, use the opportunity uh, to put in uh, suds. So to give you some uh, uh, reassurance. At the moment, TfL is pursuing five schemes, part funded by uh, my Green and Healthy Streets Initiative and Thames Water to deliver suds at Tolworth, Nine Elms Lane, Edgware, Streatham High Street and Old Street. Uh, they'll deliver to in total almost 24,000 square metres of suds uh, catchment. Additionally, you mentioned surface water. We're also trying to look at subsurface, improving drainage uh, and so forth. You know, the, the, the new tidal way that's been built uh, as well. But you're right, we've got to think about, you know, the more concrete there is, the less opportunity there is to make sure that the water can seep in. And suds is one way. The other, the other point, of course, that I mentioned in my answer is the growing back greener. The more green space we have, you know, you can't, you can't beat nature. Yeah, absolutely. Now, with TfL, you had a target of 50,000 square metres. Um, but from 21, 22, we only actually drained 500 square metres. So that was only a hundredth of your target. Now, to be fair to you, if you add the boroughs to that, uh, you still miss it by a seventh of your target. So you're on course to miss this target for a, th a third year in a row. Now, I just heard you say there that there's lots of schemes, and I know you've called for um, a billion pounds of SUDS investment. So it seems like we're on the right track on this. But I think the bigger question is about the lack of data, um, because whenever I've looked for more specifics, there's very rarely figures about how much or where. So what can you do to make sure we've got more accurate and more up-to-date data on SUDS? Well, missing from your question was the big obvious uh, uh, elephant, which is COVID. So COVID stopped things down, and it's, it's only fair that you should have mentioned that. 
that of course we had, we, had, we started in 2019-20 with the uh, target and 13 boroughs agreed just by themselves to deliver almost 30,000 square meters but then covid happened but and so nothing happened uh, during during covid there wasn't even a figure given last year and there was no covid last year well, there's well, a reason or we were out of the lockdown last year well, uh, i'm afraid we weren't out of covid last year uh, this time last year christmas was very different uh, to uh, this year uh, we also had of course which was missing from your from your uh, question uh, no fund no funding secured for TfL uh, TfL literally uh, having no deal with the government so the two big changes is uh, us hopefully being out the worst of COVID but also us now having a long-term uh, capital uh, capital revenue deal with uh, the government on TfL's uh, funding the reason why it's not possible to have a uh, date a number for the amount of suds uh, got in across the city is because a number of different landowners uh, we've been putting suds in and there's no way of collating that so you mentioned the boroughs figures there's TfL, there's other developments and so forth. So we're trying to get the information uh, across London. The target was for everybody, not just for uh, uh, TfL. And we're trying to improve uh, the way of catching that data for the obvious reasons that, that you and I have discussed. Uh, unless you measure it, you don't know how, how well you're doing. So uh, I'm hoping to see more progress over the course of the coming period, and you will see that figure going upwards. Good to hear that will be going upwards. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Have a good holidays and Happy New Year. You too. I'm out of time.